Greetings, greetings, and good morning to you all, Facebook people. Praise the Lord. Good all of morning, our good brothers, morning. amen. All of our brothers and sisters, all of our friends, amen. amen. All those who are interested or are curious, we welcome you to Bone of My Bones, Marriage School of Ministry with Pastor Maureen. And Pastor Colin. Amen. It is good to be with you again. Amen. It certainly is. Well, good morning to you. Good morning, my dear. And we are back again. We're back Amen. again. Amen. We have so much more to share Indeed. today. Isn't it? Oh, my yes. goodness. Praise the Lord. We've learned a lot over the years, I can tell you. You know, 32 years, you learn a lot. I know there's people that have been married even longer than that. So, you know, but we praise God for where he has brought us to. Amen. Yeah. I must say, you're looking quite rather fine this morning. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. You're and looking I, very African. Oh, well, you know, it's some, it's, I've just been a long time since I've worn these. It, you know, it, it yeah. reminds me of our mission trip with Bishop to uh, to Nigeria. Bishop who? Bishop Buchanan. Okay. Yeah. And not everybody would know. Yeah. So it, it, <laughs> it was good. It was good. It was good to, to be. I was just re I was looking at some of the photos about you know the travels oh, and just reminiscing with Pastor lovely. Tony and uh, mm. you know the wonderful people in, in Nigeria. Yes, yes. And uh, thankfully I'm connected with some of them on Facebook. Yeah. Great. Praise the Lord. But I enjoyed those missionary mm, times. Mm. I did. Yeah. I used to have a match in Africa. That's right. Yes. Yeah, I'll yeah. say no more about that. <laughs> I lost weight. <laughs> too, I can't wear it anymore. I have to get rid of some of my clothes. <laughs> too, too much weight. Trust me. Connie's not happy. Oh, no, not happy <laughs> but it's, it was for health reasons. So I keep telling me it's for my health. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I understand, but you know what? Nah. But yeah, we used to have matching pairs, so yeah. that's why I don't talk about it too much. <laughs> but mine, it's actually quite, it's a bit bigger. Quite roomy, yeah, yeah, quite spacious, but well, we've, we've been God. working out. Yes, we've been yeah. doing some sweat We've been busy together. in the lockdown, yeah. We, we haven't been sitting there stuffing ourselves. We've all. been eating healthily, oh, yes. and we have been exercising together yes. in the mornings. Yes, we have. Oh my, and Praise it's God. good fun. Good fun when you can do these things together. Yeah, Amen. it is. And to, really just to see the results. And I have seen the results. I'm shaping up pretty good. Yeah, so you are. You I, are. I, I, I'm doing well. Right. Losing the bulge. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. A wee, a wee bulge. <laughs> but praise God. Bulge is going yeah. down. Well, Glory to God. Well, with you and, with you and Michaela on my case, I've got a choice of my own. <laughs> praise God. Yeah, Michaela's quite a little policeman, isn't she? <laughs> Michaela is our daughter. And uh, my goodness me. I've got, I got, I got my daughter and I've got my wife on me all the time. <laughs> Case. Oh dear. <laughs> But praise oh, the Lord. Praise you know, the well, Lord. We love him. We, That's why we do yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I get that, you know what I mean? So, but we praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just thought we share those little bits of moments with you. You know, <laughs> it's always good to share a bit of family things with you. Amen. Amen. Well, we are back with you again uh, today for Bone of Our Bones, uh, uh, Married School of Ministry. And we're continuing on our theme stand. We had uh, said so much last time, and I pray that you can hear us this time. So, do let us know if the sound is good and that you can hear us clearly because the last time we had some issues with the sound but praise god the holy spirit helped me to resolve the problem amen praise the lord. so i give the lord praise hallelujah uh, for that amen amen well we're going to go right into just a moment of reflection and we're going to be going right over to psalm 34. now the last time that we were together we did look at uh, one to three but we're going to be looking at verses seven to nine today and it's just to reflect on the goodness of god amen and uh, the Bible tells us in Psalm 34 from verse uh, 7, it says this, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Amen. Amen. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him amen, amen to that you know there is a place where we need to be in our relationship to god where we know that he sent angels to guard us and to rescue us amen, amen. all of us who reverence him who honor him who respect him you know whatever we go through in life and whatever challenges we may have we can take a leaf from the psalmist david because he went through so many problems and so many challenges in his life but he learned to trust in god amen, amen. he learned to let god be a prime mover of inspiration in his life 
The Passion Translation says this, for the angel of the Lord guards and rescues all who reverence him. And in everything, we need to give God praise. We need to reverence him. We need to honor him. Sometimes when we're going through challenges, we, 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 we don't really, do we? We don't really uh, spend time with the Lord. We don't feel in the mood to talk to God. But he's the best person to talk to. He's the best person to talk to, yes, indeed. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's the best person to reach out to. And so we know that he, the angel of the Lord, he guards and he rescues all who reverence him. And it says, oh, put God to the test. In other words, taste and see that the Lord is good and see how kind he is. Mm. See for yourselves the way his mercies shower down on all who trust in him. Amen. Amen. So God's strength, God's favor, God's mercies, hallelujah, God's faithfulness pours down on those of us who trust in him. Amen. Amen. And so we just want to focus on that today as we go through um, our teaching today, as we go through uh, the school of ministry. We Let us remind ourselves, even in, from ver in verse 9, it says, if you belong to the Lord, reverence him. For everyone who does this has everything that he or she needs. Amen. Amen. So let us take time to give reverence to the Lord. Let's honor him. Amen. Amen. Let's glorify his name in the midst of everything. Our God can be trusted. Our God is our helper. Amen. Amen. Our God is the one who grants mercy and grace. Amen. Amen. And so let's continue to trust him, lifting up his name. Hallelujah. Be encouraged by his word to you today. Amen. Amen. As we lift up his name. Father, we give you praise and we honor you, you in Lord. the name of of Jesus. Amen and amen, amen and amen. amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Pastor Morn is going to pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Yes, we just Lord. give you glory, honor, and praise yes. for this another opportunity to minister to your people. My Lord. Father, you've given a word to Pastor Colin, you've given yes. a word to me. Yes. We pray in the name of Jesus for your inspiration, for your anointing, for your power. Amen. Oh God, to accompany us, yes. your anointing to be upon us as we minister. Amen. May the Holy Spirit have free course and to do to mm. do whatever He wants to do, yes. to say whatever He wants to say yes, through us yes, so that your people will receive the information that they need mm. you know what you want to accomplish yes. in this school today yes. and we pray in the name of Jesus that your will yes. will be done Amen. we pray through your purposes and your plan for this ministry yes. you know exactly what you what you set this ministry up to do yes. I pray that you will help Pastor Colin and myself to be obedient yes, to, to your call yes. and to do exactly exactly what you want us to do Amen. we pray that you will bless all the people who are listening yes, give them a hearing ear yes, that Lord. they will hear what the spirit is saying yes. lord we believe that the holy spirit has led us mm. to say what we're going to say today and yes. we pray that it will have a huge impact yes, on all who hear it yes. we pray that your words will not return to you void amen but they will accomplish what you set them forth to do amen. in the name of jesus amen. right now we bind every evil spirit amen. that would come against this ministry amen. every malevolent spirit mm. every distracting spirit yes. in the name of jesus you are firmly bound and you will not operate in this atmosphere mm. you will not prevent people from listening amen. to this ministry Ministry. You will not prevent the word from going forth and Amen. for people to hear it. In Jesus' mighty name, we plead Glory the blood of Jesus over this Glory ministry to today. Amen. We sprinkle the blood Amen. and we thank you, Lord, for Amen. the victory. We loose ourselves from any demonic power Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you so much. Amen. amen. I'm greatly encouraged by the prayer. And we honor the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are going to continue with our marriage school of ministry today on our theme, Stand. I'm going to recap on where we were the last time. If you were not able to see it the last time, please do go back. Uh, it is on our Facebook page, on the Bone of My Bones uh, Marriage Ministry page, so you can go back to it and listen to it again. Amen. Amen. Um, but I'm going to recap with a few points that I left off with the last time and then continue with our teaching 
um, marriage school of ministry on the same stand. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Powerful, powerful, powerful word. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the last time that we were together, and uh, I mentioned a few points, and I'm going to mention them again. Firstly, God does not want you to have an unhealthy relationship, mm. and God desires your marriage to be a healthy one for both the husband and the wife. So God didn't institute the marriage relationship for you to have problems with, for you to get on each other's nerves. Yes, that was not true. God's ideal. God's desire is that your relationship is a healthy one amen. amen for both the husband and for the wife amen amen secondly for this reason our theme stand is much more than just asking god to change your situation it is about standing for all of the changes that need to take place in your marriage this includes making changes in yourself Amen. Amen. And it's not, it really is about that. It's not just about changing the situation and everything else, but it's about making changes in ourselves as well, even in our own attitudes and the way that we think and the way that we perceive things. Amen, Amen. to that. Thirdly, when you choose to stand, you are actively working to purify yourself by changing your behavior and attitude so that you can be the spouse that God has called you to be. Amen. Amen. Now I want to say that again because this is very, very important. When you choose to stand, you are actively working in purifying yourself by changing your behavior and attitude so that you can be the spouse that God has called you to be. Amen. Glory be to God. Fourthly, you are also standing in the place of your spouse and interceding for them in prayer. Amen. That God may also work in them to make them the spouse that God has called them to be. Amen, Amen. to that. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Now, what is extremely important and I'm, I'm teaching us teaching today because I want us to get this really into our spirit. Okay, what is extremely important is that while you have made a decision to faithfully stand for your marriage, you must be prepared to conform to God's standard and way of doing things by coming in line with his word. Amen. Amen. So while we are standing, while we are, we've made a decision to faithfully stand, we must be prepared to conform to God's standard and way of doing things by coming in line with his word. Amen. I want you to repeat that again so that we get that into our spirit. Amen. Amen. The Bible teaches us in the book of Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, and I'm going to be reading this from the Amplified Classic. Amen. Mm. It says this, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg you and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated and well pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship amen amen so we come into conformity to god's word to his plan to whatever he says in his word that we need to do we put that into operation in our relationships amen, amen. and that's where change comes so we are to surrender ourselves to God, yes. first and foremost, Hallelujah. so that we can experience all that delights his heart. Amen, Amen to that. Amen. And this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Amen. Amen. There are times when we just don't know what to do. There are times when we struggle and then we end up doing things the world's way. Mm. We believe the world's way is the correct way yes. of doing things, not realizing that the one who instituted marriage teaches us in his word how to overcome obstacles in our daily lives. That's right. That's why he says that we, Paul says, I appeal to you therefore, brethren, and beg of you in full view of all the mercies of God to make a decision Decisive, the dedication of your bodies presenting all of your members and faculties 
as a living sacrifice. Amen. Amen. It means surrendering yourself to God. Yes. That you can experience him in an extraordinary way. Yes. And then we need to stop imitating the ideals and the opinions of the culture around us. Amen. Amen. And get back to the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Get back to the word of God. So we have to be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how we think. Mm. Amen. Because Amen. how we think determines how we act. That's right. And so therefore, if we have the right way of thinking, then we can step into our relationship with the right attitude mm. and the right way of doing things. That's Amen right. to That's that. Right. So this will empower you to discern God's will. Yes. As you live in a uh, live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. Amen Praise to that. The Lord. So it is important that we conform to the standards of what God teaches us in His Word, since He is the one that instituted the marriage relationship. Amen. Amen. It's important. This scripture we read it all the time, but if we apply the principles of these verses to our daily lives, it will make a significant difference. Amen to Amen. that. So, above all, you and I must understand that in standing, your faith must be in God and not in your spouse. Amen. Amen. Your faith must be where? Your faith must be in, in God, God and, not in, and not in your spouse. Amen. That's why the Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Amen, Amen to that. Glory be to God. Or as the Amplified Bible puts it, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Whoa. Amen. So we must have bold faith in God, yes. amen. amen, so that we can overcome the situation. But if we keep putting our faith in, uh, in our spouses, then we lose sight of mm. what God wants to do That's in right. our relationships, amen. amen. So we must have bold faith, as I said. Faith brings what we hope for into reality. And that's why when we pray, we must trust God enough mm. to know that he is going to help me through this. That's he is right. going to help us to stand. He is going to break through, hallelujah, the darkness, amen, amen, and bring our relationship back on par because we have cried out to him, amen. amen. Glory be to God. Secondly, faith is the foundation needed to acquire the things that we long for. Amen? Yes, amen. So we must have a foundation of faith. We may not see it with our natural eyes, but we need to look beyond the natural. Yes. Amen to that. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Faith takes us beyond the natural. Mm. Amen to amen. that. So your faith in God and your commitment to him does not depend on the choices that your spouse makes. Oh, now that's quite a that's quite a, a statement okay your faith in god and your commitment to him does not depend on the choices that your spouse makes mm. therefore you need to pray that god will keep your focus on him yes. and that you will not lose your focus amen. amen you will not misplace your faith or that you will not try to control things on your own mm. amen. amen we have to believe god amen, amen. we need to Faith is something that we need to have. It's a foundation that we need to acquire so that we can receive the things that we long for. Amen. Amen. Father, we give you praise. Amen. So, remember, your spouse has free will. And God will not control them back to you. Mm. You know, sometimes we say a few words, we say certain things, don't we? And here we are, we were talking about what, what God wants to do in the relationship. And sometimes we, we're saying to God, Lord, can't you just control the person's mind? Can't yes. you control? No, it's not about that because God has given us free will. So your spouse has free will and God will not control them back to you. But if you stand for your marriage, you are trusting God to work 
in the situation mm. and you will know that you you will you will know that you are doing all that you can to do to stand for what is right mm. and oppose what is wrong yes. amen yes. and in in our relationships we need to stand for what is right yes Yes, and we need yes. to oppose what is wrong. Yes, Amen. Yes, and yes. challenge it. Because in the end, Jesus Christ will be glorified. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the name of the Lord. Glory Hallelujah. be to God. Praise his name. So we need to work on our problems. Of course. And many people ignore the problems, thinking it's going to go away. Mm. But you need to work on your problems problems yes. amen yes it is important to note at this time that marriages do not fall apart by accident mm. they fall apart because we fail to deal with issues and because of this a number of things are built up over a period of time mm. okay resentment sets in bitterness sets in frustration sets in anger sets in unforgiveness sets in which then leads to extreme difficulties now this is quite serious mm. it is therefore important to make an honest assessment of yourself your life and your marriage and look for your own shortcomings even if one party is more at fault than the other mm. amen. amen we can't just keep putting it on the other person and not putting it on you know on yourself looking at yourself mm -hmm. amen? amen it takes two to make something real the bible says can can to agree and uh, uh, walk together except they agree mm -hmm. amen yeah. and so we need to be able not to keep blaming the other person but to look at ways of how i can improve myself that i can improve the situation amen because there may be some things in me that are irritable yeah. amen yeah. now we know this we've been through this over the years mm. there are some things that will irritate you about each other yeah. but those are the things that you have to let go of yeah. those are the things that you have to just release amen yeah. Yeah. so that you can be the spouse that god desires you to be amen yeah. Don't you think, though, mm. that sometimes, as you were saying, that um, sometimes things build up over years? Yes. But they yeah. build up really because people allow bitterness and, and, and resentment yes. to set in. And some people yeah. believe yeah. that they are entitled. Yeah, that they have you a know, right. They have a right yeah. to be bitter. They've got yeah. a right to be resentful. Yeah. They, they, they think about things and they meditate yeah. on the things that they don't like. Mm. And they allow this nasty attitude yeah. to fester. Yeah. And they think that, you know, because the person is not doing what they want them to do mm. they have a right to do that yeah. but the word of god doesn't tell us that not we have all. a right to be bitter and mm. to be resentful it says that we must put away Amen. all bitterness and wrath and That's anger right. and clamor That's and right. evil speaking yeah. and we must be kind yes. to one, one another, another. Yes. you know and yes. we found yeah. haven't we found pastor mm. colleague yeah. that when we obey the word of the Amen. lord Amen. god knows in 32 years <laughs> we certainly had reason to to be bitter and resentful <laughs> with each other. Yes, we we've have. had all kinds of things yes, happen. We have, we but have, we have. we've discovered mm. that by obeying the word of the Lord, mm. putting our feelings to death, yeah. the nasty attitudes and the, the, the simmerings mm. inside of our head, when we give them yeah. to the Lord and we yeah. obey what God says, Amen. God is then able to deal with the problem Amen. and give us a good marriage. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what's important at that's the end right. of the day, is can I trust God to help me to deal with this? Because a lot of the times in our flesh, we don't believe the other person deserves our that's forgiveness. Right. That's right. We don't believe that they deserve our no, love. And so no. therefore we build up this real hatred yeah. and resentment. Yeah. And that is not God's ideal for any of us. Amen. Not at all. You're not doing yourself any favors None. if None. you're holding on to bitterness and anger and calm. And in fact, should you go into another relationship, you, not bring that, it with but you. you take it with you. You, bring it with you, you. carry that baggage with yeah. you because you've not dealt with it. That's it. We need to deal with the problems. Yeah. Amen. We need to deal with it according, according to what to word God's God. word says. Hallelujah. Not according to other people's yeah. opinions. Amen. Not unless their opinions are based upon the word of Amen. God. It has to be Amen. based on that. How else will we be successful? That's right. Base what we do and the decisions that we make on what the word of God teaches us. Amen. If anybody knows about relationships, mm. it's our heavenly it's father. Her. He, he instigated the marriage, he That's instituted right. marriage. There was reason for that because he wanted stability. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's why he said be fruitful and multiply. But let's not fly too far ahead right now. Amen. Praise the name of the Praise Lord. Praise the Lord. So 
we need to make an honest assessment of ourselves. Yes, Amen. Yes. So whether you or your spouse are mostly at fault for the state of your marriage, you must look for areas where you can improve and do better and commit yourself to work on those areas. Amen. Amen. That was a decision that I made many years ago, and I know more Pastor Moy made the same, that we had made a decision to come in line with God's word, amen, amen. to come in line with his truth, amen, <laughs> and to look at ourselves and to improve ourselves in areas that we knew we had problems, amen. amen. So we worked on our problems. So in doing those things, uh, what we need to do is that we can see, seek help or count wise counsel from your pastor or Christian counselors about your problem and how you can be restored from past failures in your marriage. Amen. Because a lot of the times we go into marriage with baggage. We carry that baggage with us. We think we're going to be okay. We think that our spouse is going to be the one that's going to take us on a, to a particular place. It doesn't work that way. There's mm. so many things that we do need to deal with. Amen. amen. As, we, as we go into marriage. And when we're in the marriage relationship, we're learning about each mm, other. Indeed. You'll be surprised. The stuff that you find out about each other that sometimes shock you, surprise mm. you. But can I deal with that? Yes, by the word of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. And things about yourself yeah, as well. Yeah. You know, not yeah. only do you find out about your, your spouse, you find out about, about it because you don't really realise some no. things about yourself until you're in a relationship with somebody That's else. That's right. And then you start, and the problem is that you start acting in a particular way and you wonder where it's coming from. Mm. You know, that's what happened to me. I was acting there, oh, I'm not normally like this. I don't normally do with things this way. I'm not mm. normally. And there we, there I was wondering what was going on in my life. And I had to go to God and God, God took me back to my, to my, to my, to my younger days, things that had happened to me. Amen. Amen. And he showed me what I needed to do. Praise the name of the Lord. And the moment I understood it, that's when, when we started to work, begin to work through the issues that we had and we were able to take the relationship to another level. Amen. Amen. And that's what God did. So we need to, you need to examine your own life and seek God as he can and will purify you from all sin. You need to truly repent and turn away from the sin that is in your life as it is here that we receive God's forgiveness and we too can forgive one another. That's right. So whatever challenges we may have had, whatever things that we have done yeah. uh, that we know that we shouldn't have done in the relationship or otherwise, we need to repent of that. We need to seek forgiveness from God and we then need to begin, allow that forgiveness to flow through us in the relationship so that we can develop a much more healthier marriage. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So through it all, you will realize that you will need to make dramatic changes to your lifestyle mm. so that you can become more Christ-like. <laughs> Amen. So true. And be in a better position to flow healthily in your relationship. Yes, Amen. Yes. It's so true. It's so true. Because, it, you know, Jesus came so that we can become more Christ-like, yes. having the, his attitude, his way of thinking, amen. Because remember the Bible says that God's ways are higher than our ways, amen. Mm. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, amen. Mm. And so we do need to work on your problems. Do not hold on to those problems. Do not allow yourself to fester. I'm telling you, you become so hardened that you will, you will find it difficult to love again. You will find it difficult to relate to others again. Amen. So please, please, please. Amen. Learn to talk about your problems. Share. Speak to somebody that you can trust. Somebody somebody that you can sit and, and, and teach you the word of God. Amen. Mm. And let you know exactly where you are and what you need to do. Praise yes, the name yes. of the Lord. Another point that we need to consider as well is whose fault is it? Mm. <laughs> whose fault is, is it? <laughs> oh my, 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 my. Who's, now, fault shifting is one of the biggest reasons where couples have a hard time resolving their marital conflicts. Mm. It's true. We all do it at one time or another, but that does not mean that we should. Mm. Amen. Mm. Whose fault is it? Mm. Amen. Mm. The answer to the problem is never in finding who is to blame or who is at fault. The answer, whatever the problem is, is always found when someone takes responsibility. Mm. 
we foul if we don't take responsibility. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we don't want to hear the truth. Isn't That's that right? True. Sometimes somebody's saying, but look, you, you know, you're speaking this way or you're doing this or you're, you're no, what we're talking about here is that we need to, someone needs to take responsibility so that we can deal with the fault line. Amen. So we can deal with the fault on the line. Taking responsibility does not mean that you are taking the blame or that the fault is completely yours. This is about changing the situation. Mm, Amen. Yeah. When we were going through our challenges in years gone by, we, you know, we decided to take responsibility. I took responsibility. Maureen took responsibility. So we were then able to present ourselves before God. Mm. And then the Lord would lead us in what we needed to do about ourselves. Amen. So that we could do better in the relationship. Mm. How can I speak more kinder? How can I not shout? How can I not lose my temper? Well, it was about submitting, as we learn, conforming to the standards of the word of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Conforming to what God says. Amen. Mm. Amen. So instead of going around bl blaming each other and also what you do then is that you talk to, you talk about other people mm. about your spouse. Mm. Oh, he's this and he's that, or she's this and she's that, and she doesn't do this and he yeah. doesn't do that. Mm. And so you're you're giving somebody else a bad perception mm. of your spouse. Mm. When in effect you should be talking to somebody about resolving the issue mm. between you. Amen. So that that can be dealt with. Amen. Mm. Because when you talk about your spouse to somebody else, then they see that person in a different light. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Father, just give us wisdom in how to communicate our issues. It's true. It's true. You know, let's not talk about the fault finding and everything else. Let's take responsibility. Amen. Mm. So many times, couples with marriage problems come with their own ideas of fixing their marriage by trying to fix their spouse mm. each one sets out believing that their marriage problems are the other person's fault by measuring their own faults against their spouses and the balance always leans in their favor yes. it's true and that's what happens and this is where this is where the problems become even more of a problem mm. Because you're blaming him and she's blaming you. And yes, you both may be at fault and one may be at more fault than the other. Mm. But what am I going to do about it? Mm. I've got to start taking responsibility yeah. for this. We need to see this situation change. Amen. Amen. And grab a hold of it. Don't let the devil twist up your relationship. No. Don't make yourselves vulnerable, as the Bible says. Don't give the devil any foothold. No. Amen. No. Let not the wrath go down. Amen. Yes. We, you understand? Glory be to God. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. Very important. Very important, this, this, this stuff. That's why we're going steady today with this, because this is vital importance. Yeah. Blame game does not change the situation. No, no. Taking responsibility does. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that's exactly what we had to do. Indeed. We had to take responsibility. I knew that there was things in me that needed to change. Mm. Pastor Moy knew that things in her that needed to change. Mm. And we took responsibility for our actions. Amen. Amen. And that's what took us to the to the next level in the God in whom we serve. And Amen. we give God praise for we that. We do. We do. Amen to Hallelujah. that. Glory be to God. So let me just give you some more thoughts and instructions. Amen. And we're going to then hear from uh, Pastor Moyen. So we're going to be switching to and fro because we want to give you as much information as possible. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, we serve a God who loves to demonstrate his might over the forces of darkness. Mm -hmm. Always remember that. We need to choose to stand firm in the battle for our marriage. Amen. Amen. It's true. Okay. Yeah. So, what do we need to do? We need to confront Satan's lies. Mm. Amen. Many times, because we are ashamed, we hide our problems from others and we put a good front on it. It's true. Mm. There are a lot of people who go through life, they hide their problems from others and they put on a good front. 
but we need to plug into God and we need to get help. Amen. Because mm. when you think that you're doing OK, somebody one day is going to say something to you and you are going to explode mm. to the point that venom will start oh, coming Jesus. out of your mouth. Yeah. Amen. Having kept it all in. Oh, my goodness me. When you yes. build up that resentment, yeah. that bitterness, the anger, the yeah. frustration, when you allow that to build up and you don't deal with that, that is a that is something that is ready to take off. Amen. Amen. And it's not that you're angry at the person who you're talking to. It's just that there's been so much build up, amen, mm. of negativity, of, of bitterness, of anger, of frustration. You've never dealt with it. You've never spoken to anybody about it. And suddenly, oh my days, it spews out of your mouth amen. like venom. Oh, Father, help us and have mercy on us, oh Terrible. God. Terrible. We need to plug so into ugly. God. It's so, so ugly. Mm. More. We've seen it in our own mm. lives. We know what it's like. It's yeah. not a pleasant place to all. be at. Not at all. I do not want an atmosphere of negativity in my home. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. So we must confront the lies of the devils. Amen. Amen. And also, sometimes because we don't communicate, because we don't because we don't communicate, what happens is that sometimes when we when we when we begin to talk to our spouses we then realize that our spouses are more understanding than we realize mm. sometimes we have a misconception and a misunderstanding yeah, we can be surprised yes we yeah. can be surprised into in how how our sponsors will respond. Mm. we were <laughs> you know we were surprised in how we responded to each other but mm. but we because we, we there was a love that we had mm. that god had given to us that we had a love for each other that well, we've got to do something about this. You know what I mean? God has an ideal for this relationship. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we decided to take responsibility yes, for our actions. Yes, Amen. Amen. It is very important. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. So do you doubt sometimes whether you are capable enough, brave enough, strong enough to handle the difficulties of life? Always remember that God is your strength and your shield yes he is. you are not alone amen never, when you have to deal with these, with these situations no, no. god is our strength mm. and our shield if we just hold on to him if we just trust in him amen, amen. we need to overcome the superman and superwoman myth mm -hmm. amen <laughs> Oh, I'm okay. I can handle it. That's what guys will say. You know mm -hmm. what? I'm strong enough. I can deal with this. You know, you understand? No, mm -hmm. don't hold on to that. Amen. Let go of them. Superman and superwoman myth. Amen. Have the courage to face a giant in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Take responsibility. Avoid the danger of the grass is greener on the other side. Mm. Amen. Amen. Somebody shows you attention. You're going through turmoil. Somebody shows you attention. Amen. And you think the grass is greener over the other side. I want to tell you it's not as cut and dry as that. Amen. Take responsibility. Stand up for your marriage. Amen. Fight against the devil and his cohorts. Take the word of God, hallelujah, the sword that the spirit wields, and change the situation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to Renew God. Renew your mindset. Amen. Glory be Amen. to God. Renew it. Yes. Amen. And let God be God in your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We do indeed. Hallelujah. We do indeed. So, there are some things that you need to remember to do. Mm. Firstly, stay in a God-centered, healthy community. Don't be around people that are going to be negative towards mm. you, telling you that you can't. Listen, I remember years ago when we when we got married. You know, people would say to Maureen that she must, eat, I must, I must eat what she gives me. She must make me eat what she gives me to eat. Now, there's certain things that I don't like. And I made that clear to Maureen before, you know, when she used to cook stuff for me, I told her what I liked. Isn't that true? That's right. You know what I mean? And people said, no, but how can you be cooking, you know, three or four different things? Sometimes you're cooking three different things, isn't <laughs> yes. it? Because we all have different tastes. You know what I mean? But tell them, why do you do that? <laughs> tell them why you cook the three different meals. When people were telling you about, you, you, you must make me eat 
what yeah you must make me eat what you give me yeah well yeah uh, sometimes colin wants to eat one thing mm. and sometimes i don't want to eat what he has because maybe <laughs> i think it's too fattening so i have some variation of what you or sometimes i might have something completely different yeah and then sometimes my daughter <laughs> wants to have something else mm. so i end up cooking three different meals and i've got to have bits of paper mm. i have to be incredibly organized i have to have different timers and bits of paper and note paper to write down who is doing what and what t- time i should put but i do it because i love my family mm. i do it out of love mm. i don't try to manipulate people mm. in order to make it easier for me i do what each member of the family likes and as a result I have a very happy home. Yes. My family loves what I do. Mm. I do it out of love, mm. and we're all very happy. Amen. But that's Amen. The, that's, the, that's the point, isn't it? Yes. The point is, if you are in a in a God-centered, healthy community, then you are going to be instructed to show love, yeah. to show kindness. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Faith, faith, uh, faithfulness, mercy. You will show all of those things in the relationship. Yeah. Amen. And you do it in different ways. And we do ways. it in different ways. I do it through cooking. Yeah. <laughs> I do it through, through everything else around the yeah. house. Yeah. We yeah. show love in, in various different ways. We do. There's been times when, when Moanda's been tired and I've done certain things and she's woken up and she's oh. And I, and I said, well, you were tired, so I did it. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Show kindness. We try to show consideration. Yeah. Be we try to consider another. what each other thinks. Exactly. We, you see, the Bible, the Bible is all about mm. the other person, about yeah. looking after the needs of the other person. Yeah. The Bible is not about selfishness yeah. and doing things that's going to make you feel better mm. and doing things just to please yourself. That's the right. Bible says we shouldn't please ourselves. That's right. We should please others. Amen. And you do that through the things that you're prepared to do. Okay. Sometimes you have to put yourself out, but if you do it with a good heart and a good spirit mm. you reap the devi- dividends of that amen and this we is, are we are we we, we reap the benefits of it, it hallelujah makes, it makes such a difference yeah amen yeah little things you mm. know mm. putting cups of water next to your wife because you know that she likes to have water when she's watching a, a <laughs> show or something you know what i mean those are little things oh. Those are things that you can little do. Gems, little gems little that gems. you can do. Because why? You're showing kindness. You're showing kindness. Amen. Showing consideration. Knowing that you want to see the other person happy. happy. Amen to Glory that. So that's why God. it's good to stay in God-centered community where yes. people can encourage you yes. in those ways. And give ways. you good advice. And give you good advice. Solid yeah. advice. Give you good advice. This Amen. world is a selfish world. Yes. And if people give you word, um, words of advice yes. about selfishness and about how you can get one over on the other person, yes. that's not godly advice. Not at all. You don't want to listen to those people no. you know the bible says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel right. of the ungodly we yeah. talked about it on our other show yeah. a time of ministry and you know sometimes godly people can give you ungodly That's advice right. that is totally out of line with the word of god mm. you need to throw that away Amen. it's going to ruin your relationship maybe you might scale, score points with your peers mm. but it's not going to score points in your relationship and you could end up divorced that's not going to make you feel very happy is it not at all <laughs> and, and remember that as well. You're carrying the same kind of things into another relationship. That's right. So it doesn't change anything, does it? No. And that's why it's important to take responsibility. And let's look at ourselves as well. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Make this very clear. Let's yeah. look at ourselves. Yeah. Can I do anything better? Mm. I've been doing this like for the last few years now. Yes. You know, what can I do to enhance the relationship mm. that I have mm. with my wife? And with my family yes, amen yes. that's been on my mind and yes. i've been teaching it to husbands and i'm saying this is what we need to do what can i do to be better because mm. we could always do better mm. praise the name of the lord well it's working praise God. i have to say it's working <laughs> <laughs> michaela and i were having a conversation pastor Conan went away i think it was about a, over a year ago wasn't okay. it we went to sheffield when did you go to sheffield oh, yeah about two years now two yeah years about ago. two years yeah, ago we went yeah. to sheffield and yeah. so michaela yeah, and i course. were left on our own yeah. for a few days mm. and so so we had to struggle because Pastor Colin has quite a, an input mm. in our family life. He does a lot to help out around the house. And when he's not there, there's a lot more that needs to be done. Mm. And, you know, those of you who uh, um, have your husbands away know what it is when you have to shoulder all the responsibility. Mm. Anyway, um, while he, he, um, while he was gone, Michaela and I had, were doing various things around the, around the home. And then we sort of said to each other, well, you know, she would do different things. Mm. And then I said, but you're, you're not doing it the way Daddy did it. Mm. And then she would say to me, but you, you did this, but Daddy, Daddy doesn't do it that way. <laughs> and then we looked at each other and we said, we need Daddy. 
<laughs> Daddy has got it time to a T how we both like things done. To the time, you know, even when I'm having water, if I'm if I'm doing a, a um, if I'm having a little a little sit down in the afternoon, sometimes I'm preparing something and I like a, I like a, a cup of uh, peppermint tea. I like it to sit down. I like it to be done and brewed. So I drink it when it's at a particular temperature. He knows exactly when to put the kettle on, when to pour the tea, when to put it there, so that when I finish doing what I need to do, it's ready for me at the right time. Yeah. Because he's got that time. He takes that little bit of attention. Amen. And he does all these things. But they make a huge difference. Yeah in a relationship because he cares mm. about pleasing me yeah. and doing the things that's going to make me happy Amen. and i do the same Amen. thing for that's him right. that's yeah. why i cook yeah. the way yeah. i do yeah. sometimes i'm prepared to put myself out mm. because i want to please him but just for him to lick his lips mm. at the end of the day yeah. and to say how much he's enjoyed the meal it is worth gold yes. to me yeah so there you have it. So it's a change attitude. Yeah. Change where you're thinking. Yeah. Amen. And that's that's what it took to get us to this point yeah. in our relationship. And the same thing can happen for you yeah, too. Indeed. Amen. Indeed. Praise the name of the Lord. So stay in a God-centered, healthy community. Do not try to stand alone or struggle alone. Amen. Yes. Surround yourself with loving, supportive, caring friends who will pray with you mm. and encourage you from the word that's right amen those that's are the kind right. of friends that you need to surround yourself with amen. amen because when we allow shame or stubbornness to rule we number one we give satan the foothold that he is looking for mm. secondly we fail to seek help mm. thirdly we ignore the problem Fourthly, we become reactive rather than proactive. Yes. It's true. Yes, Fifthly, we, will, we fail to be an encouragement to each other. Mm. And sixthly, we deny that there is a problem. Yes. Amen. Amen. And that's why we're saying take responsibility. Husbands, take responsibility. Wives, take responsibilities. Get help. Get support, whatever you need to do to change that relationship and get it back online, do it. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Do not hide the issue. Bravely bring those issues to the light. Mm. Amen. Amen. We must stand firm and we must honestly answer when people ask how we are. Mm. Stop saying you are fine when you are hurting and that you have lost hope amen mm. you got to stop doing that amen sometimes we try to put a brave face on things and in here we're burning up mm. we're building up that hurt that pain and we're not taking responsibility we're not dealing with it that doesn't change anything and this is why relationships are the way that they are sometimes because we don't take responsibility oh, dear Lord. father we just pray that you will help us, help amen. Us, Lord, help Glory us, Lord. be to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read a scripture and a couple of points, and I'm going to pass right on to, to Maureen. There's more that I want to share, and we can do that uh, next time. But let me just say this to you. Ephesians 5, verses 8 to 11, says this. And I want us to understand this. Once your life was full of sin's darkness, but now you have the very light of our Lord shining through you because of your union with him Wonderful. your mission is to live as children flooded with his revelation light mm. and the supernatural fruits of his light will be seen in you goodness righteousness and truth then you will learn to choose what is beautiful to our lord mm. and don't even associate with the servants of darkness because they have no fruit in them instead reveal truth to them amen. amen in your relationship you need to have the shining light of the lord shining through you because of your union with him amen when you decide to take responsibility for your relationship that light begins to shine then suddenly grace wisdom knowledge divine revelation begins to flow on the inside of you and you are in a better position to take your relationship to the next level. Yes, amen. amen. That's the God in whom we serve. And that's why we have to learn as we go along what pleases the Lord so that our lives can be 
examples. Amen. Amen. Coming in line with God's word. Your actions should reflect your faith. Yes. We should live moral lives so that we can reflect God's goodness to one another and to others. Amen. Amen. And it is vital, it is of vital importance to avoid evil pleasures. Yes. But we must go even further. Amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul instructs us to rebuke and expose them for often our silence is interpreted as approval. Mm. God needs people who will take a stand for what is right, yes, not does. what's easy for them, mm. not what's easier for the other person, yeah. but we need to stand for what is right mm. and who, wherever you are, lovingly speak out for what is true and what is right right praise the lord amen Hallelujah. and that's very very important it is, it is. you know pastor Moore, there's so much that we can share i want you to just go right on and just begin to share share the word right now amen amen i believe we have to do another session regarding this because there's lots more that we have to do we've got to deal with forgiveness oh, and forgiveness okay. and we've got so many things to do with indeed, my darling indeed. amen go for it girl praise amen the lord. here praise is the pastor lord. Moore. God bless you. God Amen. Bless you. Hallelujah. God. Praise God. Well, thank you, Pastor Colin. That was very, very instructive. Amen. Wonderful words there that we can learn about how to, to do our relationships and wonderful tips. And I really hope that you enjoyed that. If you didn't hear all that he said, please go back and listen yes. to the ministry at the beginning. You yeah. can replay that. Yeah, but right. I'm going to go on with my talk now. Amen. And so the title of my talk, as we said, the the, the, title, the, the theme of today is Stand. Amen. And I, my subtopic topic is making a stand for marriage yes, and this is part two we did uh, we did a ministry about a month ago mm. and so i am going on from that mm. uh, so there is no doubt in anyone's mind that we are living in very difficult times oh yes right now yeah. there is a move against judeo-christian values on which most of western society was built mm. People are substituting these values with a new morality which bullies mm. and harasses those who oppose what they stand for, yeah. using fear to force people into submission to their way of seeing and doing things. Mm. They have been highly successful so far, managing to get governments to bow to their demands mm. and change laws to come against the commandments in the Bible. Marvel. This is illegal in the sight of God, mm. and as citizens of the kingdom of heaven, we are mandated to restore God's way of doing things on the earth. Amen. In this Amen. talk today, I will be addressing how we can make a stand for marriage mm. according to God's way of doing things. As Pastor Colin said, uh, uh, said earlier on, this is the second part of our marriage school. If you missed the first part, go back to the, the Bone of My Bones marriage ministry page where you can hear mm. what we did last time. Last time we met, I ended my talk by mm. talking about the biblical idea of marriage. Yes. I just want to go over a few points here mm. to bring us into what I want to address mm. today. Now, marriage was established at the beginning of time in the book of Genesis. God created a man and called him Adam. Mm. Initially, he was the only species of his kind. Mm. But God did not think it was a good idea, good for him to be on his own and created a help meet mm. for him. According to Genesis 2.18, the King James Version, yeah. it says, um, And the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make an help meet mm. for him. The words help meet come from the Hebrew Chaldee word, Aza, mm. which means help, mm. succor, mm. or one who helps. Yes. The meaning of the word succor in English is assistance and support in times of hardship and distress. Mm. Uh, a helping hand mm. or give assistance or aid to. Mm. The role of the wife, therefore, is to be of assistance to the man yes. and to support him in times of trouble. Oh, my people always actually realize that yeah i think i mean i've learned that over the years and one of the things that i'm so grateful to god for is the way that you where, where i where overlook things you just come and say but have you have you thought about doing this mm. i remember when i first wrote, when i wrote my first book um, to be be that man and i and then you were editing that for me and you say what did you mean about this and you you would always come and say what did you mean about this and then you would say well why don't we change it this way around mm. and so you were always there to give that that little help that little that little bit of assistance mm. where i did where i lacked we are there to complement that's right each other that's amen right. And so she, Maureen does that a lot for me. She will look at stuff and say, okay, this needs to go here or this needs to go there or have you thought about this or did you 
did you remember this? You know what I mean? Mm. Being a help is not about being a dictator. Mm. It's about putting, it, filling in the, the blank spaces. Amen? Because there are blank spaces mm. sometimes, isn't it? Mm. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, the Bible gives guidance to both the husband and the wife's roles within the marriage. Mm. In Ephesians 5, 21 to 22, the Amplified Classic, we are told this. Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed yes, One. Yes. Wives, be subject, be submissive and adapt yourselves to your own husbands as a service to the Lord. Mm. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, himself the saviour of mm. his body. As the church is subject to Christ, mm. let wives be subject to every in everything to their husbands. Yes. For some people, this scripture is very controversial. The idea of a wife being submissive to her husband is abhorrent and archaic. Mm. However, when we become born again, we are to let go of the principles and the ideas of the world that do not accord with God's word mm. and submit to his authority. It's true. Romans 12, 2 instructs us, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed yeah. by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what mm. is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm. Many children of God disregard the word of the Lord because they place more value on the opinions mm. of man and they want to fall in line with the philosophies of the world. Mm. They are fearful of the repercussions of not complying with the rules of society. Yeah. Also, many preachers fail to preach the unadulterated word of God because they fear the criticism mm. they will receive as a result. Mm. Isn't that true? It's Dr. true. It's true. Yeah. People, a lot of people lack courage. Yeah. They lack courage because they've been criticized in the past because people People come up against them and they and because they're not prepared to make a stand mm. on the word of the Lord mm. they will capitulate mm. and just avoid things and try to, to make things soft for people yeah, and we true. haven't done that no. have we? No. <laughs> no, we haven't. No. We know what criticism is. We've had our fair We've share of it. Fair but share. we have realized one mm. thing. Mm. When people criticize us, God will commend us. Amen. There is nothing like mm. when you have been standing on the word of mm. the Lord and people come up against you and say all manner of evil mm. against you for the Lord to comfort you and to tell you in his word how he sees it mm. and how he's commending you and what you need to do to get through it. Mm. It makes it all worthwhile. Mm. So we are not prepared to capitulate to what other people think. Mm. We are servants of the Most High God and we're going to tell people mm. what God thinks. They can do what they like yeah. about that, but we are not standing down from that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, and this is again from the Authorized King James Version, and fear not them, which, sorry, 28, yeah. verse, uh, Matthew 10, 28, mm. and Fear not them which kill the body, mm. but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body Amen. in hell. You know, one thing I realized, Pastor Colin, yeah. a lot of people don't have much reverence for God. No. Have you, have you realized that's that? That's right, that's right. People don't have much reverence. Mm. I don't know if it's because they don't see God or people mm. don't have much of a relationship with God. For some um, children of God, God is just somebody that they re relate mm. to on a Sunday morning when they go to church. Or so, of course, of course, we've all been in lockdown, mm. so you don't have that. Mm. So there's somebody that you, you, you listen to your pastor speak to mm. whenever you're, it's on Zoom or, mm. or YouTube or Facebook Live or what have you. Mm. So it's just that relationship you have there on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people... People don't read their Bible in the week. Mm. They don't have a devotion. They don't. Right. God is just somebody. If they want to, they might say hello to him in the morning. Yeah. If that, or yeah. say or say a good night prayer or pray over the food. Yeah. But their relationship with God is very shallow. Yeah. They yeah. don't have much of a relationship with God, and therefore reverence for God is very lacking oh in our society today. Mm. So people don't really care about what God says. Sometimes people are ignorant mm. about what the Word of God is, and when it is pointed out to them, they will fight. You. Mm, all the way. <laughs> they'll criticize all you the for telling them how to live their lives mm. a lack of reverence but i want to say today mm. that there is a day of reckoning coming Amen. and for some Amen. people it will come sooner than others yes. because some people are passing away very unexpectedly we are in a pandemic mm. thank god the death rates have, have gone down but we have heard them say i hope it's not true that there's a second wave coming mm. if there's a second wave coming there may be more deaths mm. 
unexpectedly unfortunately so we are going to have to meet the god that many of us have not been paying attention to the very god that we've been disregarding mm -hmm. and, and, and disrespecting mm -hmm. so we're here to point out mm -hmm. god's way of doing things mm -hmm. praise god and we're here to say that rather than fear your friend's criticism mm -hmm. you need to fear the god mm -hmm. who's going to judge you at the end of time because we all have to stand before God and we are going to be judged mm. from the book doesn't mm. it say in revelations that the books were open mm. the book of books mm. the book of books is the bible mm. so we are going to be judged as a, a, according to whether or not we paid attention mm. to the rules and the recommendations and the commandments because God's mm. word is law and it's given to us in the word mm. so we need to start paying attention to it rather than valuing our friends uh, opinions more than God's mm. words so I yeah. can't emphasize that in my Amen. we need a shift yes, we in attitude. Yeah. We need to reverence the God that we're serving Amen. and don't disregard him and disrespect That's him. Right. Praise That's God. Right. We're Amen. told in first John chapter two, verses fifteen and seven, this is from the Amplified Bible. Mm. Do not love the world of sin that opposes God and his precepts, mm. nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Mm. For all that is in the world. The lust and the sensual craving of the flesh and the lust and the longings of the eyes and the boastful pride of life, pretentious confidence in one's resources or in the stability of earthly things. These do not come from the Father, but are from the world. Mm -hmm. The world is passing away and with it, and with it its lust, mm -hmm. the shameful pursuits and godly longings. But the one who does the will of God and carries out his purposes lives forever. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Yes. Yes. So you see, God wants us mm. to love him, yeah. to love his word mm. more than we love the principles of the world, yes. more than we love the things that are happening in the world, mm. more than we love the philosophies of the world, mm. more than we love the ways of the world. Mm. Mm. We need to forsake that when we become children of Amen. God. Amen. We need to put that aside and yes. we need to value God's word and to live by it. Amen. His precepts and his commandments. Yes. He's taken great time and trouble to lay them out there. We are supposed to live by them. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're supposed to live by them. We're supposed to live by them. Amen. Okay. Ephesians chapter 5, 23, the Amplified Bible says, For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, himself the saviour of the body. Now, this is a standard that God has put up. God has laid out in his holy word the, the order of way the way things are supposed to be. Some mm. people may not like it, the fact that the husband is the head of the wife and, the, and he set them up, but this is what God has instituted. He doesn't ask us to vote. This mm. is not a democratic society. Mm. What we need to realise, when we come into the kingdom of God, we leave democracy beside. Mm. We don't vote on what God wants to do. Mm. We don't get to sit down in judgment and make an opinion upon God's word. This is a theocracy. It means that God is the head. He's the rule. He rules okay. We need to come in line with that. Yes, amen. Is and, that right? Yeah, and, 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 and I think what we need to remember, one of the things that I really love about God is he's very clear in his word when he speaks about the responsibilities that he lays out. Now, he doesn't do it because somebody else is a second-class citizen. No. He doesn't do it because women are second-class citizens. He does it because he wants to have a structure and order in the relationship. That's right. Amen. That's right. So God gives that order. However, the man's responsibility as head mm. is to make sure that Christ is his head. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's key. If Christ is not his head, mm. then he's going to make decisions based on flesh yeah. and not faith. That's right. And so therefore, as a husband, okay, because that's what the Bible's teaching mm. me, I need to make sure that Christ is my head. Mm. So I go to Christ, Christ goes to the Father, mm. the Father speaks to Christ, Christ yeah. speaks to me, mm. and I speak into my family. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's the order of the day. Amen. 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 Well, not only that. 
Um, the fact is that the Bible also tells the husband to love the wife. Absolutely. And if you they love your wife, that. then you are going to consider her. Mm. You're going to consider her That's needs. Right. You're going to consider. You're going to make the best decisions for your family. Mm. If you are instructed, if you are led by the Lord, mm. the husband should make good decisions, yeah. based, and you should discuss things oh, with yeah. your wife. Yeah. It's not like a husband is the one that makes all the decisions. The woman just has to go along with it. Mm. People that do that don't understand the word of the Lord mm. at all, mm. because women, as Pastor Colin said, we bring a different element mm. into the relationship mm. we don't see things the way men see things no. men oftentimes see things from a very mod uh, logical point of view mm. women see things from a practical mm. point of view mm. we will see things from a very different perspective yeah. so whereas men will make a decision based on one set of facts mm. women will bring other things in and by the time we add our little bit mm. to it it changes Absolutely. the whole complexion of the yeah. thing and it can bring balance mm to the view Amen. it can bring violence yeah. so we have got a value yeah. and if men want their relationship to work their best bet is to discuss decisions with their wife before they make those mm. decisions yeah and pastor colin and i when we were first married um we used to have we some of part of our problem was because pastor colin was very kind of macho and oh. wanted to, to do things himself yeah. and, and to make the decisions and i'd say things and then he'd sometimes ignore me i said okay go get it oftentimes it did not work mm. out well mm. And after a period of time, Pastor Colin realized it was a very good idea mm. to discuss things with me before he made a final decision. Mm. And after he did that, things worked out much better. Would, would you not say that yeah, yourself, Pastor Colin? Because, because I think that when you, the problem is, is that when you are single, um, I'm, I'm just speaking from a guy's perspective, when you are single, you're used to doing things your way, like yeah. what women do. And yeah, I'm, I'm just yeah. speaking from my perspective that, you know, I'm used to doing things in a particular way. Yeah. I would go up the road when I wanted, I would mm. do so and so when I wanted, I would go there when I wanted, and I could make decisions when yeah. I wanted. Yeah. And so when you get married now, you have a different responsibility. Yeah. And these are things that you have to learn in the, in the, in the relationship that there's not just you now, but there's two of you. Yeah. And so therefore, in order to sort things out or to do things in a particular way, you have to communicate. Yeah. Amen. And this is where a lot of relationships actually fall short mm. because they don't communicate. One person makes the decisions, the other person is not happy about it, mm. but are stuck in, in this in this in this rut. Yeah. But it doesn't help the relationship. No, in no. fact, you all you're gonna have is negativity mm. around your home. Mm. So mm. what we what I what I have done now is I said, Well actually no. When we sit down and we talk about mm. things, or Moy might run something by me, or I might run something by her. And when we come to a star mate, then obviously I do, I, you know, one of us make the decision. Yeah. I may say to the person, Moy, you make the decision. Could I, you know, or she may say, you make the decision. Whatever the case may be, we come to an agreement. Mm. Amen. Amen. And that's exactly what needs to happen. So I was like that. I didn't, you know, I was quite rash. You know what I mean? I, and Because I'm a doer. I will just get, if I yeah. say to Moy, yeah. oh, tomorrow I'm going to do this. You know, I just get on with it. You know what I mean? And there may be some things that I wanted her to do, but because she hasn't done it yet, I will try and do it, but then it puts me into more trouble. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> because then she can't find certain things, or, you know, and then, then we have this big heated row. And what, and what for? Because we didn't take the time to communicate. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, so it's important. It is. Praise God. Amen. In our present day society, men have been emasculated and reduced to little more than a joke. Mm. Women are championed as the stronger of the species. Mm. But that is contrary to the order that God has ordained, and it is time to bring things back into life. Yeah. The Bible tells the story of Jezebel, mm. the wife of Ahab, who was the daughter of Esbaal, mm. the ruler of Tyre and Sidon. Oh, yes. Under her influence, the worship of Baal was established in Israel and the mm. prophets of God were killed. She was a woman of intense zeal mm -hmm. and tried to wipe out those who disagreed with her. Yeah. She had eunuchs at her disposal who were men who had been castrated to enable them to be trustworthy servants of the royal court where physical access to the ruler could exert great sway, sway mm -hmm. great sway. The Bible tells us in, in Ephesians 6, 12, King James Version, that mm. we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm. Satan has built his kingdom after the order God has established and commissioned his cohorts, cohorts with varying degrees of responsibility to rule over various areas of the world. Mm. These demonic powers influence human beings by implanting thoughts and ideas in their minds that are contrary to the precepts and the laws of God. Mm. One such principality is Jezebel. 
Although the human human being died centuries ago, the spirit that influenced her to oppose the plans and the purposes of God is very much alive and well in our society today and is behind the LBGTQ mm. movement. Mm. What is that movement doing? It is waging war against all religions that oppose what yeah. it stands for, attempting to wipe out all opposition. Yeah. Isn't that true? Yeah. 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 That's what Jezebel That's did. Right. That's yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you that although we are not here to wage war against human beings, we are here to wage war against the demonic spirits mm. responsible for the ideas and the philosophies that oppose the plans and the purposes of God. My Lord, yes. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We are told in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to 5, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mm. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, mm. casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God mm. and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Mm. What exactly is a stronghold? Mm. Well, the word in the original Greek is okuroma. Some of the meanings are a castle, mm -hmm. a fortress, a fastness of the arguments and reasonings by which a disputant endeavours to fortify his opinion and defend it against his opponent. Mm. What is meant by the word imaginations Imagine. in this passage? The original Greek word is logismos, mm. which means a reckoning, a reasoning, such as hostile to the Christian faith, mm. a judgment, a decision. Taking these, decisions, these definitions in mind, mm. let's have a look at other translations of those verses. Mm. Now, this is 2 Corinthians 10, 45 from the New International Version. It says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. The Amplified Classic says, for the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Mm. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. The Passion Translation says this, for although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons using manipulation to mm. achieve our aims. Mm. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. Mm. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy mm. that opposes God and breaks down every argument every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. Mm. We capture like prisoners of war every thought mm. and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed Amen. one. Oh, Amen. glory Amen. be to God. Yes, indeed. Jesus has ascended back to the Father, mm. but he left us with a mandate to carry on the work he started. Mm. His purpose was to destroy the works of the devil. We have been commissioned to continue that work. Mm. The devil has come against marriage using the law yes. to change the definition mm. from what God ordained it to be. Yes. But this is not over. <laughs> it's not mm. over. We're taking it back. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. Mm. We can use our authority to come against the forces of evil yes. and see that these laws are repealed Amen. in Jesus' Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. glory be to glory God. Be Do to you God. know, Pastor Colin, mm. um, the things that we're facing today are not are not new. The, no, the, the, no. Solomon said, "There's nothing new under the sun." That's right. mm. There are people that stood that that were our forefathers mm. who stood against demonic opposition yeah. in the form of government mm. laws against what they were doing years ago. Mm. You know who comes to my mind? Mm. Daniel, mm. Daniel, and the three Hebrew yeah. Hebrew boys. Yeah. Uh, now, if you remember the story of Daniel. And then they were uh, taken away. Mm. Daniel and the, uh, the children of Israel were taken into Babylonian captivity mm. many, many moons ago. Mm. 
and uh, because the, the children of Israel, God had, had told them for many, many years mm. that they should stop worshipping idols. And if mm. they didn't worship idols, something terrible was going to happen. And he gave those, those warnings for hundreds of years. Mm. And then it came to a head. Things reached the, the full measure mm. and God carried out his promise. Mm. And the children of Israel were taken into Babylonian captivity. Mm. And Daniel was one of the nobility. He and the Hebrew boys and what Nebuchadnezzar did with the best of the crop. He mm. took them into his court yes. and he changed their names, yes. gave them different names. And they were supposed to be learned in Babylonian mm. culture mm. that some of their people were supposed to teach them and instruct them. Mm. And he was to get the best out of them. So mm. they were there. So they were supposed to forsake their religion mm. and adapt the religion of the day. And of course, they were not supposed to eat any of their own right. food, but they insisted that mm. they did. Mm. And they managed to do a test. They, they got favor with the, with the chief of the mm. eunuchs who was looking mm. after them. And um, they did a test and they, they were able to, to secure That's right. eating their own food. That's right. And yeah. at the time when they were taken into captivity, they were only, they were only teenagers, mm. about 13 or 14 years old. They mm. took a stand. They, they were schooled mm. in their Jewish religion and they held on to it under the most extreme of circumstances, mm. made a stand and it worked. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They were exalted. They were put into very high positions. But there came a time, remember the time mm. of the uh, of the idol that Nebuchadnezzar mm. built up? Mm. Daniel, I think, was in a different province because we don't really hear about him in this part of the story. But the children of Israel, uh, the, the, the three Hebrew boys, there was a decree that went out that everybody had to bow and worship the image yeah. that, that Nebuchadnezzar yeah. had done. Yeah. They refused, yeah. point blank. Yeah. Amen. But everybody Amen. else. Amen. Everybody else Amen. had come from all of these other places, all the Jews that were brought into captivity and all the Amen. other nations, everybody mm. had to bow to this idol. Mm. They said, no, mm. they said, no, we're not going to do it. They said, our God, mm. who is well able, he said he will deliver us. And even if he doesn't deliver us, we're not going to bow. Wow, what courage. Amen. Amen. What, what courage. courage. Amen. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Amen. They refused to go against their religion. They stood their ground. Mm. They were cast into the fire. They had absolutely no idea mm. if they were going to be delivered or not, but they were prepared to burn mm. rather than to give in. Amen. We need people like that. Amen. And in fact, we do have people like Amen. that, actually. We have, we have a lot like of that. people. We yeah. have a lot of people in other lands. Yes. We have a lot of our brothers and sisters mm. that are in, um, in other countries. Mm. Once they get converted, a lot of them that are converted, especially Muslims, yeah. And a lot of these people from other religions, they're converted. Once they come into the religion, they come in to know Jesus mm. Christ. They make a stand. They go through all kinds of persecution, but many of them would rather die than give up. Mm. But some of us in the, in the West, mm. the moment there's a little bit of persecution, some of it is the, the, the threat of losing our job. We're prepared to cap capitulate mm. and abandon our religion. Mm. Don't have any backbone. It's mm. true. Mm. We do need to do a lot of people right. don't have any backbone. They just have no courage. They don't have no confidence in God. Any little bit of persecution Amen. Amen. and they're prepared to capitulate. But many people stand their ground. They are suffering, mm. but they would rather suffer and die mm. than mm. give in. The mm. children of those, those Hebrew boys didn't do that. Mm. Daniel, when, when the Lord went against him that he should stop praying mm. to his God, what did he do? Mm. He said, I'm not going to stop praying to my God. He opened up his windows mm. wide. Mm. So that everybody could see him and everybody could hear him. Three times a day, mm. he started to pray so yeah. that they could. He said, yeah. let them take me. They, he, yeah. There was a threat of going into the lion's mm. den. He said, let them take me. Mm. They are not going to stop me mm. from doing what God tells me to do. Mm. Yeah, he was taken into the lion's den. Mm. So mm. sometimes it happens, Pastor yeah, Cohen, doesn't it? Sometimes we go through the fire. Mm. But what happened to Daniel? No, no, not burned, right? Oh, bless the Lord. The children, the children of Israel, they weren't burned. Mm. Didn't tell you the rest of the story. They weren't burned. They went into the fire. Mm. The fire slew the people that threw them in there, but they survived the fire. They were in there. And, the, 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 and Nebuchadnezzar said, I see somebody else. Mm. I see somebody else mm. in there like the Son of Man, mm. Son of God. Mm. They came out. They didn't even smell of fire. They weren't burnt Amen. and Amen. what happened they were commended in the, in the kingdom Amen. they were commended Amen. daniel the same thing happened to him yes. he went into the lion's den the, de the lions did not eat him mm. the, 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 the angels shut the mouth of the lion he mm. came out unsa unscathed but the people that were responsible 
for changing the law to cause him to go into the fire they were the ones that were mm. thrown in mm. and the lions ate them god wants people yes. to make a stand yes, amen. god wants us not to cap capitulate mm. any laws that are against the lord of god we mm. need to pray amen. that amen. god will change them yeah. so that we can make a stand yes. against them so in conclusion jezebel came to an untimely end yes. God raised up Jehu to kill Abraham, Ahab's son Jehoram and take over the throne. He was also responsible for inciting Jezebel's eunuchs to throw her out of the window where she was trampled to death by horses. Mm. Before they had a chance to bury her, dogs devoured what was left of oh her my, body. Oh the spirit of Jezebel is alive in our day, mm. manipulating mm. the unsuspecting and inputting arguments mm. and theories mm. and reasonings mm. and every pretension yeah. that sets itself up mm. against the true knowledge of God. Mm. But she's about to meet her comeuppance. Amen. The Lord God Almighty has given his body powerful weapons Amen. to demolish strongholds Amen. and to break through every Amen. arrogant attitude Hallelujah. that is raised up in defiance Amen. of the true knowledge of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. God needs people that are going to make a stand Amen. Amen. for righteousness Amen. and for right living Amen. and not capitulate to to policies and laws mm. that are illegal and satanic mm. in origin mm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to pray. Amen. Praise God. Mm. Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth derives its name, Amen. we come in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. It is written, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, mm. against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. My Lord. Father, it is also written in Luke 10, 19, that you have given us power to tread upon serpents, mm. upon scorpions, My Lord. and over all the power of the enemy. My Lord. Today we come against the spirit of Jezebel mm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Your word declares... Oh, praise God that it live us under. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Amen. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Amen. We demolish arguments yes, and Lord. every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Amen. And we refute arguments and theories yes, and reasoning yes, and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. Mm. We demolish mm. every deceptive fantasy mm. that opposes God mm. and breaks through every arrogant attitude mm. that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. Mm. Mm. We capture, like prisoners of war, mm. every thought and insist that it bows in obedience to the anointed one mm. in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus oh father we come right now in the name of Jesus father you know that there are laws that have caused your people to laws that have been established throughout the earth that are in complete opposition to your will but we pray right now that there be a change ah, those laws don't have to stand Amen. father they didn't stand in the time of nebuchadnezzar Amen. he set up laws oh god but because your people made a stand Amen. he changed the laws Amen. and we're calling for law change Amen. these laws that are in opposition to your will Amen. these laws that are in opposition to the nature yeah. these laws that are a perversion of what you have created mm. we're calling now for a change Amen. let the spirit of jezebel fall oh. Oh, man. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, we break the hold of Amen. Jezebel in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We say that Jehu's rise up. Amen. We call for Elijah's. Oh, Jezebel must fall. We call the laws back into order to your will. We say in Jesus' name, every government that has come up with laws that are against your will to force your people to do things that are against your will we say that there is a law change there is a Amen. policy change Amen. the laws change Amen. 
They reverse. The people, if they are not prepared to repent and to change them, they are replaced and they are replaced with people who will do what you want. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Amen the world and they that dwell therein. Amen. We hear, Lord, that there is a shaking in the world. You are allowing a shaking so that people will Amen. recognize that you are the Lord yes. God Almighty. Yes, Lord. You exist and they are going to come to bow to your laws Amen. and your ways. And as your people, Amen. we are here to see that your will and your ways are carried out and we do that now Amen. in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. hallelujah amen. glory be oh to god. glory be to glory god glory be to god hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah amen amen hallelujah amen. what a mighty god oh god hallelujah blessed be the name oh we praise you lord of the lord what a thank you jesus uh, Pastor Moore for this incredible oh, teaching this afternoon Lord. and one of the things what, what, what really got me uh, when she was teaching was the scripture that said that we wrestle amen. not against flesh and blood amen, amen. we're dealing with spiritual wickedness Hallelujah. in high places yes. amen oftentimes we fight against each other mm. when we should be fighting the one who is the troublemaker mm. amen so just to bear that in mind also this was a very serious teaching today and it all ties in with the word stand we got to stand up for God's policies, God's government, God's way of doing things. Amen. Amen. And that's what will make the difference in our lives. So yes. thank you very much, Pastor Maureen. You know what? We're going to be continuing with this another time because there's so much more that we oh, you have thank to you, Lord. receive. And uh, you know what? Watch out for the for the uh, promotion. We'll let you know. Amen. Amen. But we're going to be dealing with this. This is a very strong topic. It covers the relationship. It covers the relationships outside of the relationships. Amen. So many things to, 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 to have to deal with. Amen. Amen. And so we give God praise for this word today. Amen. Amen. If you are watching with us today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal saviour, mm -hmm. we would like to give you an opportunity to know him mm -hmm. today. Amen. It was the best decision that I ever made, amen, in my life. And I know it will be the best decision that you will ever make, amen. amen. So if you are watching today and you would like to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal saviour, then just repeat this prayer after me, amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, a sinner. I acknowledge my need of you. I, I acknowledge my need of you. I repent of all my sins. I repent of all my sins. And I ask for forgiveness. And I ask for forgiveness. I accept you as my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer. I accept you as my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer. And my Deliverer. And my Deliverer. I invite you now. I invite you now to be Lord of my life. To be Lord of my life. Fill my heart with your love, your joy, and your peace. Fill my heart with your love your joy and your peace lord jesus, lord jesus i now receive you into my heart i now receive you into my heart thank you for taking me as i am thank you for taking me as i am amen 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 and, amen. Amen. and if you have god. said that prayer today i want to say to you welcome to the family of god it's the best decision that you could ever make amen. and if you've made that decision today then please do contact us on the email details on the screen and let us know that we can get some information to you and help you in your next steps. Amen. Amen. So please do get in touch with us. Amen. Amen. And for those of you that really do uh, require prayer, uh, you want to get some support, you you know, you, need, you, you want some encouragement, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, when it comes to marriage, you can now email us at our bone of um, bone of my bones, ma uh, bone of my bones ministry at gmail.com. Bone of my bones ministry at gmail.com amen. amen so you can now email us direct okay bone of my bones ministry at gmail.com all right praise the name of the lord we also have some prayer booklets for husbands and prayer booklets for wives which are free uh, we can email them to you so should you require a copy for yourself or for both you and the husband where you can pray one for another amen, amen. they're not the only prayers but we, at least it's a starting point amen and we want to encourage you they're free you don't have to 
purchase them, they're free. Amen. We will email them to you if you just email us at bone of my bones ministry at gmail.com. You will get a free copy of those prayer points. Amen. And uh, please do, uh, if you are not doing anything tomorrow at 10 a.m., you can tune into Reverend Colin Francis' page for a time of ministry with myself and Pastor Maureen. That's from 10 a.m. Amen. And uh, we've also got our Be That Man a Facebook page as well, where we have ministry to men, have some great teachings on there for men. And for the sisters, should they want to be encouraged, that they want to encourage their men also. Amen. Amen. So please do go to that page as well. I want to say God bless you. I want to say God keep you and God cause his face to shine upon you. Thank you for spending this time with us. Amen. So until next time, stay blessed, stay focused, stay safe. Bye for now. Bye bye. God bless you. Look after yourself. Amen. Amen. God bless you.